Hey boys and girls, Tacoma Comics here. Welcome to Pick of the Week, Episode 2. I've actually gotten a video out on time two weeks in a row. Um, this is pretty cool. This is sort of a New Year's goal. Wanted to um, actually start uh, getting videos out in a more timely manner. And um, looks like I'm able to do it so far. This is the second episode of this show in which I go through the new comic books I got, only the new comic books I got, and uh, choose the best one. So, last week was the first week of the year. Sometimes comics are a bit slow over the the holidays. Um, so last week I only had two to pick from, and this week I had three to pick from. So let's see what I looked at. Uh, I got issue two of Die by Stephanie Hans, Kieran Gillen on the writing, and Clayton Cowles on letters. Uh, I also picked up what I just think is a gorgeous, gorgeous cover to that um, variant. And I'll tell you what, as much as I love Stephanie Hans, this one is by somebody named Shermer. I'm not familiar with his or her work. Uh, I thought this was a Stephanie Hans because it actually looks a bit like her work and is beautiful. Um, I might actually like this better than, than the Hans cover. I'm sorry, Stephanie. I really am. I mean, this is an awesome cover, too. I still don't know what's going on. Is this person, like, got, like, vaping with brass knuckles? Is this, like, a connected weapon or, or not? I'm not totally sure, but my lord, I... Both of these covers are amazing, um, but this one, I, I think, is is spectacular. Uh, <clears throat> so, that's the first book I got. I picked up uh, Batman 62. This is on my pull. Die is going to get added to my pull now. Um, Tom King and Mitch Gerads, his partner from Mr. Miracle, his partner from Sheriff of Babylon. And, of course, I got the... Frank Miller variant, that's, that's a cool variant. There's nothing crazy cool about that. It's just fun to have if you're collecting this run as I am. Um, I'll, I'll tell you the truth, and I'll be perfectly 100% um, um, honest. I don't think this variant's uh, going where everyone's like, ooh, Frank Miller did a variant. I always like, ooh, Frank Miller did a variant. It's like, ooh, that looks like Frank Miller's Batman. It's pretty cool. Um, and it is cool, but that's kind of where it ends. And then artwork that just is blowing me away. I wasn't going to get this book at all. And, you know, I like to read stories. I, I read all the comics that I buy. Um, I didn't know anything about Young Justice. I've never read a Young Justice comic before. Um, I like Brian Michael Bendis. I know some people love him. Some people hate him. I think he's a really good writer. I love some of the stuff he's created. Uh, but this cover. <laughs> wow, this cover. Um, who did this cover? DCW? I don't know who that is, to be honest with you. I know that um, Patrick Gleason is the artist on the interiors, and let me tell you something. The interior art on this is phenomenal. I'm trying to see if they have a... Uh, I'll have to look that up. Should have done my homework, but listen, I just got home from school. I got to take my kid to Taekwondo later. You know the deal. So let's get back to it. Uh, we'll start with this one. Um, this was a really... Really entertaining issue. Uh, Brian wow. Michael, jeez, I'm crow. Brian Michael Bendis has a feel for characters and for how to write a story, especially for young characters. And this is just like, this is your, your typical introduction. Uh, it starts out with a bunch of aliens in the desert coming to Earth. And then it kind of switches to Metropolis. And um, Ginny Hex, who is the daughter of Jonah Hex, is pulled over by a cop um, for speeding. She also has a shotgun in the trunk and everybody in the country has a shotgun in the trunk, but not in Metropolis, so the cop's a little wary. And then of course, boom. So I mean, the the art really, really tells the story here, right? This is um, very stylized, it's like the kicking of the leg up there. So it's just like this smiley happy. They're establishing Ginny Hex's character. Um, and then boom, everything gets destroyed different color palette, different uh, explosion here. And you can see she's got her arms wrapped around the policeman. She's a superhero. She's going to actually save the cop who is about to arrest her because that is what superheroes do. Um, bad guys come in, and, I mean, it, it's spectacular. That is a, a, a great uh, double-page spread. Um, 
and they start fighting. Um, Jimmy Hex is, is fighting them. And these bad guys are like, where's Superman? So the whole conceit of this issue is, where is Superman? Um, we want your, your Earth's champion. And they're like, I don't have a champion. Tim Drake shows up, though. Uh, <laughs> Robin. And there's a lot of tongue-in-cheek in here. And Ginny's like, you're Robin. And he's like, well, one of them, right? So there's a lot of that. And then uh, they go back a little bit, and he's talking to Cassie Sandmark. And I told you, I, I don't know a lot of DC history. I don't know a lot. Cassie Sandmark is apparently Wonder Girl, whose outfit looks like it could be a Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman, Supergirl mashup, um, which is pretty cool in itself. Uh, and then I don't want to show this all to you because it's only two days old, so I can't like just show a whole comic that's violating copyright. I'm just trying to get to some of the special pages. Uh, there is absolutely phenomenal artwork in here. Um, sequential art like that, doing the, the, the you know, 12 panel grids. Um, and then on the next page, everybody's kind of panicked, and then all of a sudden you just see like, and you hear words, um, dialogue, but you don't know what's coming, except you know what's coming. And what's coming is what's on the cover, and it's impulse. Right, so it's uh, just a, a joyous, I think joyous is the word for this comic, um, and <laughs> it says, call somebody, call anyone, Superman, the Justice League, call Harry Potter. You know they had to go through a lot of machinations to be able to say that. I know that they're not violating um, any licenses by doing that, but just to say that, I'm sure Warner Brothers, who own DC, right? Warner Brothers owns DC, I can't remember called whoever owns Harry Potter, and they, they had it out to make sure they were allowed to say that. Um, but it was kind of fun, and it's the only thing I knew about this issue before going in. I'd actually read that. The bad guys are still upset. Looks like uh, Wonder Girl is about to join the battle. And, you know, these are just, these are classic superhero moments. They play them really well. Uh, this idea of doing different fonts for everybody's name is, is used throughout. It's a l nice little mechanism. Um... You know, they're, they're not doing anything different or new here, but they're what they're doing, they're doing extremely well. Uh, so this was a, a, a really, really good book. They've got one of the new lanterns. I don't know much about the lanterns here, but this kind of shows them. And throughout the dialogue here, uh, Impulse is like, you know what's happening? And Drake's like, shut up, shut up. And Ginny's like, what? And the um, Green Lantern guy's like, what? Tell us, please. And he's like, Young Justice is back. And I mean, that's a... That's enough. So this was a feel-good comic, and I don't mean that uh, in a degenerative way. I'm not trying to say that in a negative. I felt genuinely good reading this comic, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I know a lot of other people... Look at this gorgeous art here. This bottom panel here. That's really darn cool. You know, we don't give enough uh, credit to interiors now with our cover obsession. I'm guilty of that myself. Um... I'm cover obsessed too, but the interiors of this are really, really well done. And then this guy shows up, who apparently a lot of people like. His name's Connor Kent, Superboy, I guess. Uh, so that was my first book. Will that be my pick of the week? I don't know. We'll have to see. We got two more books to go through. Uh, oh, Saya. Look at the ad for a Deadly Class TV show on the back of a DC book. I dig that totally. All right, this uh, second book, Die Number Two. If you have not read uh, issue number one, I really suggest you get that. You could probably still get it um, most places. A really, really, really good read. Issue one established the story, and the story so far is a group of kids get together in the early 90s to play D&D, &D, and then they all disappear, and they, they show up, I know, like 15 years later. Um, but nobody's allowed to talk about what happened. Otherwise, it seems like they're going to go back, but you're not really sure. One of them never made it back, um, and that kind of establishes the story. The artwork is, is absolutely amazing. Stephanie Hans is coming on strong as, as a favorite artist of most people. Um, and so what this one does now is that uh, at the end of issue one, the kid who was left in the whatever world they were brought to appears and or he doesn't appear but he somehow gets them sucked back into the Dungeons and Dragons like fantasy world that they were in um and so now they're in that world and uh they just do Kieran Gillen is just just writing the heck out of this right so he establishes um the storyline pretty well and I mean look at the Stephanie Hans art here I mean, just just 
These look like they could be any of the characters on some of the beautiful covers that she's done. Um, so Sol, the guy who was left behind, is there. And the evil guy in the past had been the Grand Master. Um, and we quickly learned that the rules to get out was that they all together had to wish to get out um, at the same time. But uh, what's it? And they put a Gaius on that they couldn't tell anybody what happened. And then they have to start the whole there's no place like home thing to like wish themselves back. But as they're just about to get back, Sol right there, that's the Grand Master's hand grabbing him and pulls him back. So they all land um, 15 years in the future and Sol gets stuck there. And of course, he's going to be bitter. But he says he's not angry. He's just sorry that he didn't get to play with them. <laughs> so he's going to play with them. He's set up a game. And he's basically taking the role of the dungeon master, setting up a thing where they've got to defeat the Grand Master and go with them again. Um, but what is amazing here is Kieran Gillen, he doesn't do this as parody. Um, he sets up different um, characters, and they're not the usual mage, druid, wizard, magician, paladin, uh, ranger, fighter that you're used to from role-playing games, especially from the original Gary Gajak's um, D&D. Instead, they've got the dictator who tells the stories, the fool who kind of is like the dorky kind of go-lucky guy who uh, thinks he knows everything and is going to go ahead and, and just fight first. Um, the grief knight, <sighs> the grief knight is awesome. Um, the Grief Knight is a guy who uses pain to become powerful. So you've got to injure him somehow emotionally in order to increase his uh, increase his power. Uh, there is Neo, um, who I believe is the healer. The Godbinder, who's like a demonologist, like a cleric. Um, there's an intense amount of back matter here, like a, a four-page essay, essay by Kieran Gillen to go a little bit more into the development of these character archetypes and how he thinks they're more fitting um, than the traditional ones, and and I think makes a really good good statement about that. And then Sol, who is the Grand Master, who's dragging everybody back. Um, so he is now there, and they are doing battle, and just kind of the way they introduce each character, it's really good. You can see this young lady down here, Neo. She's just kind of pinching her nose with a headache because there's the Hail adventurers, right? And what's happening is the classic, uh, what do they call it? Um, she's the generic elf queen of the council from the Dreaming Lands. She comes and tells them what's up and what's about to happen. And they're about to fight the Fallen, who are a type of orc army. Um, and then the, the whole group is gathering around. And, of course, it is the, the fool who's out front down here ready to fight them first. And so they go out and have a battle. And I like, you know... This is still establishing storyline, but they're not afraid to have a battle right away in the first issue. And here is more of just Stephanie Hahn's gorgeous, gorgeous art. I want to look at it as I as I look at it. I love those guys right there. That's just pretty darn cool. Um, and so they're all kind of falling into their roles that they did for 15 years in this other world, but they are also regretful and sad because they know kind of like that they have to do this to go through it but that they don't want to they'd rather be back home paying the mortgage and raising their kids and stuff um and so they they're establishing characters and what each character needs to do to become powerful and then uh towards the bottom the orcs are starting to attack them matt is the grief knight he turns his sadness into power i'm the dictator i control emotions and she just doesn't even look at him says i'm sorry he's like no don't you effing dare you see where this is going, right? So she starts to say some stuff, and I'm not exactly sure what it is. It looks like it's referring to the death of somebody he loved, but she's bringing up and dredging up memories. That's giving him power and a super powerful sword. He jumps in and destroys the fallen, and oh my god, look at the artwork. Look at the artwork. That's just freaking really good artwork. You ready, buddy? We got to go to Taekwondo soon, so that's why I didn't do this one live. Um, and you know, they're, they're getting there. One of them is a healer. They defeat the orcs and now they're kind of like, all right, I guess we got to play this game. Soul's the grandmaster and we're not going to get out if we don't listen to him. So they decide that they're going to get together and they're going to, um, they're going to get together and do it. And this guy shows up who they knew back in the fantasy land, 
apparently <laughs> this is sick. Um, they had killed him, but there was a curse on him, I think, that until he had kissed um, one of our, our crew or something, seen her face, um, what was it? I'm sorry. He would not rest until he gazed upon my perfection once more. Well, of course, they went back to the real world, so he's been there for 15 years, unable to gaze upon her perfection, so he's just waiting to die. He is basically a, a magical eyes meet mine, and um, basically 25 years of putrefied flesh slough onto me. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. And then they all realize that they've got to go forward, and the very last line is, we can survive anything but our past. So... Uh, Two really good comics so far, Die and Young Justice. Um, we'll go through Batman next, and then I will tell you which comic was my pick of the week. Luckily, I'm recording this and not doing it live, because before any of that happens, i got to take Nicholas here to Taekwondo. Say hi, Nicholas. Hi. Say hi, Nicholas. Hi. There you go. We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, and the third comic that I got... This week was, as we know, Batman 62. That means Tom King is well over halfway into his run, and at two a month, I guess we got like two and a half more years, right? Let's see, 24 in one year, 48. I guess we got exactly two years left now that I think about it, except we don't because <laughs> that would get him to 110 issues. So we got under two years left. Um, anyway, this one has to deal with Professor Pig. Or it doesn't. Um, it, the whole thing could be a metaphor. The whole thing could be a dream. Um, it's a really, really interesting issue. And, uh, you know, I remember when Tom King's Batman run started, he was getting pretty popular with War of Jokes and Riddles and a couple of those, uh, those storylines. And then, you know, you started to hear a little bit of backlash against him. Um, obviously, comparisons to Scott's Snyder on uh, New 52, and I haven't read much of that, but I read the first trade paperback. Um, <laughs> it's pretty phenomenal stuff. Uh, but I've always liked Tom King. Um, I'm a big fan from Sheriff of Babylon and Vision and Mr. Miracles, especially Sheriff of Babylon and, and Vision. Those are two of my favorite. Even his Omega Men run, I really liked. Um, so I kind of have a I like what he does, this styles, and this has Mitch Gerard's on art. Like I said, they, they've teamed up before a couple times. Uh, just so you guys all know, I'm watching Comic Core Live while I'm finishing up this video. Uh, so, you know, this, this title right here, Little Bat, Little Bat, Let Me In, the whole thing could be read as Batman is tied up in Professor Pig's abattoir um, where he is you know, freaking out because Professor Pig is uh, slicing and dicing, to put it mildly. I um, mean, he wears this, this pig face, which is not like a very good costume, which makes it all the more realistic and scary. Um, and, you know, the, the first line that Batman says is, how do you get out? And, you know, like I said, this can be read as a straightforward, Batman is fighting Professor Pig. He talks to himself a lot in this. And he's like, you know, how do I get out? How do I untie the knots? What did Mr. Miracle teach me about tying knots? Wiggle a little bit, work with the rope. And meanwhile, Professor Pig's like slicing and dicing and stuff. And so then Batman gets out and smashes him in the head. And, and you know, there's a big fight scene. The knife is stabbed in Batman. Batman gets it out and throws it at Professor Pig. And then Professor Pig's on the floor. And Batman's like, oh, my God, I forgot he's got the knife back. He was playing with me. Um, but the other way this comic can be read is, is as some sort of dream or, or wish fulfillment. Um, in this particular one, I'm not going to show you as much of the art, uh, specifically the end, because it gives away a really great reveal. I want you to read this, and I want you to get that reveal. So this comic is my cup of tea, right? This is, um, I love this sort of like metaphysical, uh, not quite sure what's going on. Um, I don't like when that happens and you're bored to death, but there was nothing boring about this because the dread was real and physical. It was not existential. Um, you know, just, uh, the, <laughs> this is pure Batman, right? He's laying upside down with, uh, you know, dripping blood. And he's talking about the rope and he says, the rope is having fun now <laughs> and twisting and turning, giving way. One finger is free. That's enough. 
and then Professor Pig comes over and Batman knocks him out and breaks down. Um, they keep repeating this line throughout this comic. Uh, where am I? How did I get here? And how do I get out? I don't even think it says where am I just how did I get here and how did I get out and so Batman is like self-help talking to himself the whole way through this how did you get here how did you get out now of course if you know Professor Pig um, Pig PYG is short for Pygmalion and um, or reference to Pygmalion that's an ancient Greek myth about a guy who carved a statue and fell in love with it and kissed it and came to life and it's about the things we love the most coming to life and so as Batman's working his way through this this fight with just this amazing artwork um my gosh <laughs> look at that page the other page is a stupid ad but just look at that right I love how Mitch Gerads does this it makes you look like something's moving or shaking when it's just he does it still but uh you know, he goes through this whole thing. He's like, that's it. It's just love, right? Talking about Pygmalion loving the, the statue that he carved. You fell in love. You went to your knees. You saw the ideal. You saw your ideal. You built your ideals. Now Batman starts talking to himself about how he's trained all these Robins. Um, and then uh, you went to the rooftop and Dick got shot. Alfred, Alfred's not safe. You go back to issue 61. Um, something happened to Alfred. Uh, we thought at first it was... Um, the penguin but it looks like the penguin's actually trying to work with batman against somebody else so there's all this stuff going on and then he's like bane gordon no one is safe your children aren't safe they're dying even the cat you know or her you asked her she said yes you went to the rooftop so just all this idea that like um unlike pygmalion everything batman tries to create and fall in love with dies or he lets down and he's never good enough to save everyone so this is just i mean this is one of the best issues uh that I've ever seen, and I can't show you the ending of this. I, I want to tell you why it's so good, but I, I can't show you the ending of this because it gives away too much, and I really want to encourage you to read this. Um, you know, I've said before, I'm not judging anybody. I'm I'm really into collecting comics, collecting runs. I love to hunt for keys. I love to hunt for keys that I can sell at auction so I can buy more keys of stuff that I want. Um, but I think sometimes a little bit we get pulled away from the, the genuine beauty that is the story of comics, and um, just this one is, is a beauty of a story. Uh, it's, it's really good. Um, so that having been said, which of these three comics is my pick of the week? And I'm dying here because I don't know. I've kind of gone back and forth. Uh, I'll give that cover of the week. Uh, like I said, this was just pure fun. Um, and the lines in here to show Impulse's joy at the Young Justice team forming again were just amazing. Uh, but it's a story that's been told before. You know, people meet up in a town for different reasons and they form a team um, or reform a team. It's, it's pure fun and you can't go wrong reading this, but it wouldn't be my pick of the week. Contrasting these two... Uh, this one, it just, it's it's a gut punch of, of a terror um, novel, or not novel, comic. Um, I don't know why I said novel. It, it really gets you, and, and it plays so well as a straightforward encounter, as well as a, a dream that Batman's having. Um, this one is the start of a D&D &D campaign. And so this also can be right on, on two different levels. This is the second um, issue of a comic where the story gets going, but it's also the, you know, you've met the dungeon master, you've established the rules and the roles in everybody's character, and now you're about to go and, and like, really enter the the scenario, whatever the, the dungeon master has created for you. Um, I think, and I, I might change my mind as soon as I, I hit this, I think this is my pick of the week. Um, Mainly, not mainly, I, I, what puts it over the top is the, the Back Matter essay by Karen Gillan. Um, the art is gorgeous and tells a story. Uh, the art in this is phenomenal. It doesn't, um, maybe I'm just a little too familiar with it, so it didn't strike me as, as new or, or stunning. Uh, Stephanie Hahn's style, that's, that's your cover there, Stephanie Hahn's style blows me away. So... I'll call it um, two amazing, amazing books. I, mean, I only read three books this week, two absolutely amazing books, uh, but I'm going to give pick of the week to Die Number Two by Kieran Gillen. 
Stephanie Hans, and Clayton Cowles. Please, guys, let me know in the chat what you think. Uh, if either of these or any of these three major pick of the week, let me know. If you read something I didn't that I should have read, uh, please let me know. If you agree with me or disagree, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and, and that's it, man. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I plan on making one every week. We'll see how long that lasts. But, you know, two in the first two weeks of January, I'm doing okay <laughs> with myself. So, again, I'd just love to hear from you guys. Tell me what you think the pick of the week was, and I'll talk to you next week. Take care.